Distribution over no votes on the hospital provider fee as several senators lose their committee chairmanships. Fallout over Republican votes against the hospital provider fee knocked three senators out of leadership positions today. Senator Mitch Sebaugh and Senator Preston Smith were among three Republicans to cast no votes against House Bill 307 last week. Sebaugh submitted his resignation as majority whip late last week, while Senator Judson Hill, who declined to vote on the measure, was stripped of the chairmanship of the Reapportionment and Redistricting Committee. After learning today that he would no longer chair the judicial Judiciary Committee, Senator Smith rose in the midst of discussion about House Bill 1258 to lambast Senate leaders for strong-arming votes in order to pass the 1.5, excuse me, the 1.45 percent hospital provider fee. That Thursday, when the votes for passage were uncertain, the Lieutenant Governor suspended our action and recessed the Senate for a hastily called meeting in the President Pro Tem's office. He ordered the majority leader in the pro tem to get the votes and to threaten chairmanships if they were not obtained. The president pro tem used to tell me... He Out of order, state the truth. At the meeting in the pro tem's office, there was a hastily called caucus position on a vote. A caucus position has come to mean that if two-thirds of the members of the Senate Republicans vote for an issue, you have to release all objections and you must follow the herd. You must vote that way. You won't find it in the rules, it's not there. There is no definition of a caucus position. There is no definition of a penalty for failure to follow a caucus position. All it says is for a caucus position to pass, two thirds must vote for it. There is precedent in our body during my service of people that have voted against caucus positions. The most notable one was SB3, where members voted no despite us taking a caucus position and there was no punishment whatsoever handed down. Now, in that clip, you could hear the lieutenant governor chastising Senator Smith. Well, down the line, Republican leaders say that a hospital fee with its accompanying federal matching dollars is the only way to balance the state budget. We're protecting Grady Hospital. The safety net hospitals are being protected by, by paying them back based on their, their Medicaid rate. We're taking all of those funds then that we give them back and then running it through the Medicaid system as well. So we, we have a net gain of over $600 million. All of those funds are going into the care of others. Senate Majority Leader Chip Rogers said the Senate amendment eliminating the state tax on health insurance was the best way to make HB 307 palatable. So I'm faced with a bill that creates a temporary three-year fee asked for by the hospitals themselves, and maybe because it was the worst of two options coupled with a tax cut that eliminates the state tax on health care policies permanently. Now, I don't know how you judge it. And the remaining 55 members of this body are going to have to judge it for themselves. But when I'm looking at a temporary three-year fee asked by the people who the fee will be imposed on, balanced against an elimination of a tax, I don't call that a tax increase. 